Okay, so let's take a look at uh, this Z-score problem here, which is a, a word problem where we're applying um, some statistical probabilities um, to, to uh, actually a real life question. So what we have here is we have um, the lifespan of a smartphone, so the lifespan of a device is distributed under a standard normal curve. Um, its mean um, lifespan is 24 months and has a standard deviation of 2.55 months. So with this data, if a company offers a replacement for a faulty smartphone, how long should the guarantee last in order for the company to only allow 15% of its, I guess, installed base to be replaced? Um, so the ones that they sold. So this is a typical question that um, a business would do an analysis with, right? They're offering a warranty, um, but they don't want to replace um, too many devices because that costs too much money or too many of the products, but they want to offer a warranty that has a reasonable length of time such that um, anything before that, they will have only replace a, a very small amount, in this case, 15%. Um, but if the warranty was too far or too long, then they would end up having to replace more of them. So they try to do a, a, here a calculation based on the quality of the product that they have and how it's distributed so that um, they can get their, the best range of values here for their, for their warranty. So the first thing to do is we just need to understand how this question is set up. So a standard normal curve is essentially your normal distribution. So that means everything is centered around the mean and then the tail ends of the objects here um, uh, go down towards, towards zero. So the mean is in the middle Okay, and we would say that the mean of the smartphone here is 24 months and it has a standard deviation of 2.55. So we can just write that here on the side. So I will do mu for the mean here is 24, sigma for the standard deviation is 2.55. Now what we also have to know is that we want the company to replace 15% of all the area of the smartphones that they sold. So the probability of replacement, okay, is 15%. That's equal to the area under the curve. Okay, so this is the, the heart of the question here. Where is 15% on the area of this curve? So what we need to remember is when we are doing um, probability, um, that the area under the curve, we always read it from the left side. <clears throat> so the total area of the curve is 100%, um, but starting from the left side is where we would have 0%, okay? And then somewhere way, way out here at the edge, okay, would be 100%. So this is going to be probability here, or area. So we want to know <clears throat> where we would get 15%. So between 0 and 15, Okay, is the area of the curve that we're interested in. So I'm just gonna change that to a different color right here. Okay, so the part in blue represents 15% of the, uh, the smartphones that will fail um, in, uh, if the mean is 24 months. Okay, so the majority of the phones are gonna be fine for 24 months, but within that 24 months, there's gonna be a certain amount that will fail. So what we wanna calculate is how long should they guarantee such that um, we only are going to be replacing phones um, in that 15% probability range, okay, where the mean is 24. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to calculate the area under the curve. Um, and we know that, or sorry, we know that's 15% for the area under the curve. What we need to calculate is what is the, the, the data point here for the number of months um, where this value here is equal to 15%. So that is this X value that we're going to calculate here. All right, so to do this, we actually need to figure out um, what's called uh, the inverse normal um, function for this because instead of calculating the probability, which is what we've done in other in the first part of this unit, um, now we're asked to find at what point along the x-axis, in this case we're measuring months, does that give us 15% of the probability in order for it to, to uh, be found. So we can use what here is called the inverse normal function. 
So it's called inverse norm, right? And that was, uh, should, be, should have been covered in your videos. Now, the way this um, takes an argument is you can actually do this question in one step on your TI calculator. Okay, you will um, bring up the inverse norm function. You will uh, open up the bracket. You will give it the area under the curve. So in this case, the probability that we want to have is 15%. And then instead of just closing the brackets and printing out the value um, and then doing the, the question sort of the long way, you can provide the actual mean and standard deviation of the um, data set that you're looking at. So you can just do 0 0.15, press the comma key on your calculator, type in 24 for the mean, the second number is the mean number, and then the third number is the standard deviation at 2.55. So if you do all that in one step, you will get an answer of 21, okay? And that means that is the number of months that the warranty should be um, advertised by the company so that they don't replace more than 15% of their product. Okay, so the inverse norm function will automatically do this question. Um, you can do it in, in just one quick um, step. Now, if you want to do it another way, you can also just use the inverse norm function to find the Z score of 15%. So if you just put this argument in by itself, you will get a value of negative 1.036. But this is not... Um, correlated to your data just yet. This is just the standardized Z score. So if you remember, the Z score means the mean is zero and numbers to the left are a negative and then numbers to the right are positive for the Z score. So then you can use the Z score formula. Um, so then you have the Z score formula. And what we can do is calculate the actual data point um, given the mean and the standard deviation. So remember the z-score formula is equal to z is equal to um, x minus mu all over sigma. Okay, so we're, that is the, the mean and that is the standard deviation. So what we're trying to do is actually find uh, the actual x data point. So we can further rearrange this question to be written as follows. So we can cross multiply. So we can have sigma times z um, is equal to x minus mu, okay, we're, and x is, remember, x is the point we're trying to find, so then x is equal to sigma times z plus mu. So this is uh, the rearranged formula that we could use to figure this out. So we can just plug in what our standard deviation here is, is 2.55. We know our z score is negative 1.036. And then we also know our average um, for the data set there is 24, and that will give us X. And then if we take that down to the same value, we should get approximately 21 months rounded out to the nearest month. Okay, so there's two ways to do this question. Um, in both cases, you have to use the inverse norm function to get started. Um, but using the z-score formula demonstrates that you understand how to rearrange the formula and solve for one of the variables that are in there. Um, but you can um, just use the inverse norm function on the calculator by adding the two extra arguments, okay, the mean and the standard deviation, and then allowing the calculator to take uh, that answer out for you directly in one step. Okay, so that's how that question is interpreted and that's how you'd set it up.